Arnold Allen on the phone now with Ben Heather from Kingdom of May. First of all, congratulations on picking up your uh, your first victory in the UFC. How did it feel to to go out there and and put on a show? Uh, thanks, man. Means means everything to sort of get the win on a big stage and uh, and for it to be an exciting fight too. Uh, I'm pretty disappointed if I don't want to miss a like, boring boring fight or decision or something like that, but. Yeah, I was happy with the performance. How did you find the pre-fight build-up? Did it feel the same as every other fight you were in, or were you more nervous for this fight? Um, I felt like I just felt normal to be honest. It felt like a normal sort of thing. I like, fight for cage warriors before they got like a like pretty like pretty similar sort of thing. It's just everything's a little bit bigger. There's a little bit more media to do this. You know, there's a little bit more more medical. But where it was all short notice, it was a little bit of extra stress where I could sort of rush around and get my uh, medicals done, my eye tests, my MRIs, and you know all, all the flights, and get out of there as soon as I could. It was, it was quite stressful to get that, get the fight. Was it was it almost a, a relief once you were flew out to Berlin to to know that it is happening and and you you are going yeah. there to get the fight? And uh, you made it back to England on about ten o'clock Sunday night. Have you had chance yeah, right. to um, watch the fight back yet? Yeah, I've seen it. I have seen it back. Not very good quality. Though. I need to watch it better quality. But um, yeah, I, I have watched it back. It wasn't, but a lot of mistakes. But it was, it was exciting not to watch. And, and you said you was uh, pissed off after your performance at the end of the fight. Now you've had time yeah. to let the emotions settle down and, and watch it back. Do you still feel that way, or have you changed your opinion now? Bearing in mind you took it on short notice. Um. Yeah, I, I know. I am annoyed. I know I'm a lot better. Like, I know I'm a lot better than I should have been. But I still feel like I need to sort of get back to my normal self. And um, yeah, it's just been a bad week. How did you find the atmosphere in the arena? You've you fought obviously in the UK plenty of times, and out in the Middle East with Cage Warriors. But how would you say the German crowd compared to to the other places you fought? Uh, I'd say they were a bit hostile towards me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they were my biggest fan. <laughs> Having a lot of uh, a lot of abuse when I was walking out. A lot of people shouting things. That's normal, normal stuff. Just more people than usual. That's all. Yeah. And and would you say it changed after the fight? Were were they respectful then? Yeah, they were. I, I had a wander around. I watched some fights. Me and, me and Luke Bryant walked around the stadium, and uh, you know a lot of a lot of people with his team shirt come up to me and just for photos and said well done and stuff. So yeah, that that was cool. And as you walked out to the cage, you looked really focused. Um, but at one stage, it did seem that you broke out a bit of a smile as you was looking around the arena. Um, yeah. Was that you almost recognising what an achievement it was for you to be in the UFC and, and walking out as um, possibly the biggest arena you've, you've fought before, or any of your team for that matter? Was that, was that when I walked out, or was that when I got into the cage? It was, it was as you was walking out. That explains that one then. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I stepped in the cage and this, someone, someone else has asked me, like, I sort of waited by the door for a second and had a big smile on my face. That was, that was kind of acknowledging sort of what I'm done, like, you know, where I am is, is good. Yeah, and what you've had to get to, to to this stage of your career. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And nice, nice moment. Yeah. And uh, let's talk in a bit more detail about the fight now. 
Um, would you say that um, Alan Omar was quicker than you expected him to be when you were sitting there with him? No, it was, uh, it was pretty much everything I expected, really. I thought he was, um, uh, yeah, I, I thought he would be stronger, to be honest, actually. Yeah, he was good, like, for a lot of, uh, a lot of right hands, did, you know, he's an experienced fighter, fighting south for so short notice, he had a good game plan leave with the back end of the man and he landed a lot of them. I just sort of a bit slow to move my head. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you mentioned there about that big right hand. Um, mm-hmm. that's the, he tried to use this, the straight right to build a lot of his combinations. Was that yeah. something you'd spotted in his previous fights and you'd look to counter in, in the pre-fight build-up that you had? Yeah, me and uh, Jack Mason were talking about it because Jack, Jack watched a lot of his fights for me and like, went over and gave me some advice. And uh, it, it's something he did a lot against Jim Allen as well. I think he even dropped Jim Allen with it. He, um, he, sort of, he, he throws his right hand with a funny sort of angle. Sometimes he throws it to the hip, sometimes an overhand. Very rarely it, it was like a dead straight shot. It, it was quite a weird thing. Weird shot he throws. Omar, um, going into the, the third round, all, all the mm. judges had you um, down um, 2018. Obviously, yeah. you you didn't know that at the time, but but what did Jack no. and and your corner say to you before that third round began? Did they um, did they tell you to go and get the finish and that you needed to finish? Or? Yeah, Jack said you're two rounds down and you know you've got you got to get the finish in this round. You've got you got to work for it now. But um, I can't. I didn't believe it because I thought I won the first round. I, I was convinced I won the first round. I was like, I knew I lost the second, but I was very convinced I won the first round. I thought I did enough, but maybe not. Yeah, I, I, was, I was also quite quite shocked. I, the first round was very close. I could see it going either way, to be fair. But, okay. but um, yeah, it was um, it was definitely a lot closer than than the second round. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, just, I think it sort of had like a adrenaline bump in the second. Like I didn't feel any more nervous than usual, but I, I like I kind of just had a sudden loss of that energy. I was just like, ah. <laughs> I don't know if that was maybe where I took the fight short notice, but, you know, the film, like I've said in loads of interviews, I'm, I should always be fit for three fives, but I suppose you can't prepare in the gym for uh, that sort of feeling of fire in front of that many people. I think it was 8,000 people. Yeah. And then before, my biggest was probably probably 1,000 people, I think. Yeah. And um, you mentioned there about having the adrenaline dump. You got taken down at the start of the third round, and it looked yeah. like you did take a, a bit of a big breath at, at that stage. Um, how tired yeah. were you at that point? Because it looked like the gas tank was maybe uh, near and empty. Um, yeah. And like you say, after taking the fight on a week's notice, it's it's going to have some impact on you. Mm. Uh, I didn't feel like, uh, like like I was gassed or anything. I just I don't know. I think it was just a little mental lapse. My brain was just sort of having a having a nap for a minute while well, I was just getting beat up so I think it was just sort of taking a time out <laughs> let me take it on the head until it sort of come up with another game plan <laughs> yeah. and uh, if you could talk us through the finish now was that a, yeah. a guillotine that you've drilled many times at BKK? Uh, I would say I've drilled it many times we've sort of messed around with it a bit like Sean was showing us it and I, I nearly caught Jack in once <laughs> He'll, uh, but he'll probably deny that. <laughs> but, um, I think uh, I, I think the only person I've probably caught of it is, is little Corey. I'm just messing, like, messing around with her. So I'm, uh, I think I caught her. So, uh, she'll probably deny that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a word for her later. Yeah. And I don't know. I know it was someone small. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when Omar came in and looked to get you down again, and left his neck yeah. out there. Did you did you know straight away that? Uh, uh, as soon as my arm was across his neck, I thought, yeah, it's over. Yeah, because I, I knew it. it. It did look like pure instinct. As soon as his head went down and the neck was left there, you locked yeah. it on and then cr- cranked it out and and pulled it oh, over. It's a horrible, it's a horrible choke, man. It's, it's painful. Like it's one of the ones. It's on. It's on. Like straight away. Yeah. And. Um, once the fight was over, you 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 got the win. How good did it feel when uh, you got your arm lifted and your name called out as the winner of the fight? I know it's 
it's been a dream of yours and you said that it would happen at 21 yeah. but now you've actually achieved that that goal what, how did it feel it's uh, pretty satisfying to sort of know like my goals are on track you know like um, I've got, got some, some much bigger goals now sort of move the goal posts a bit further back but um, yeah it's, 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 I'm very happy to sort of achieve achieve my plan and uh, by no means is that the dream that's, that's, my, that's a goal that's just a step you know that's a step towards the dream And not only did you get the win on Saturday night, you also picked up a nice performance as a night bonus. Firstly, yeah. did you Seriously. did you think you'd done enough to to get that, or or did you expect someone like maybe uh, Scott Askham, who picked up a, a solid first round uh, TKO mm-hmm. victory, to to get the bonus instead? Um, no, I didn't. I, I, I mean, I did expect to get it because under the circumstances, you know, the circumstances we know is so that. 21, like fighting the level of competition and all that, go and have a tough fight, throw three rounds, maybe two rounds down, hit the position the last. You know, I don't think anyone else sort of went through the pressure I went through in that fight week, so you know, I wasn't surprised. And uh, secondly, how much will that, that bonus help you out in the near future? It's, it's certainly a, a great improvement on the money there is on the UK MMA yeah. scene. And you, you mentioned earlier about um, rankings, um, uh, the, and how you're so young, but fighting the level of competition that you are. The latest UK yeah. MMA rankings um, have came out, and they, they ranked you at 18 at featherweight, which, in my opinion, is just just crazy. What is on, especially for the UK uh, scene? Uh, what is what is your thoughts on the rankings? Because it seems that a lot of guys are struggling these days to pick up fights because of them. Um, Brian Adams from Jim One is um, just one person to openly criticise them, and some of the yeah, fighters absolutely. have said that um, they're, they're highly ranked to just struggling to get fights at all. Because and the others are, uh, who are highly ranked are, are not taking fights to risk losing yeah. the position. Yeah. UK fighters once they get signed by the UFC like to uh, like to fight on the local European shows. Whereas in yeah. your career, you've already shown that you're you like fighting away from home. Are you hoping yeah, to be yeah. called up to shows like um, the Vegas card, Brazil, yeah. and other Euro- uh, awesome. cards around the world in the near future, rather than just sticking on the the European circuit? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to just sort of you know travel the world fighting and. Uh... That's, that's part of, like I think Sean Carter said he said you've got to uh, use the sport don't let the sport use you and, and if I can travel the world and do my job at the same time then that makes me very happy because uh, I've, I've been around Europe and seen Europe I've never been to America so it would be nice it would be nice to get out there and, and travel about and see some new places you know and, but yeah don't get me wrong like one day I would uh, part of the plan I'd love to fight in London at the O2 if they ever come back that would be awesome yeah. uh, but yeah like, hopefully headline a, a London card one day would be amazing yeah yeah that would be pretty sweet mm. and um, an, another rising trend of the guys once they've been signed with the UFC is to go out to the States and train with one of the top gyms 
over in the uh, over in America. What are your thoughts on this, and, and is this going to be something that you'll be looking to do in the near future, or will you be sticking with BKK? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go like I say, I'm gonna go do some traveling, have a look around, get some new ideas from a different team and stuff. But Go there for yeah, a, go there to learn a new few new tricks and bring it back to BKK. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah just like that, just get some new skills, maybe some different training partners, and then uh, yeah, just just get some experience and just get back to it. Yeah, yeah, so so what's next for Arnold Allen? You mentioned you've you've had a, a couple of little injuries. Um, yeah. Will you be taking a, a short break from the gym to heal up, or have you got other plans? doesn't keep you out of the cage long and we see you fight yeah, again no. in, in the near future. But I'm planning to have a week out of the gym but I'm just not going to be able to punch anything for a while so I have to sort of roll, wrestle and take it easy on the head. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you've achieved, like you mentioned earlier, you've achieved one of your major career goals. Not not your ultimate yeah. dream but, but one of the ones on the way and you set yourself to, to complete it at 21. What is the next goal that you would like to achieve? Um, just like to, I haven't really set them out really, to, to be honest yet, but um, it, it'd be nice to win the fights on my contract. Um, I've got a four or five deal, and you know, it'd be, uh, it'd be a pretty big goal of mine, like a bit of achievement to win those. So I'd be happy, I'd be very happy if I could do that. So f- three more wins, and that's that's the next goal, and then see where you go from there and work your way up the rankings. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like, there's no, no point for me even looking at the rankings at the minute. Like, uh, there's, uh, there's some levels to be climbed, so yeah. That's it. Um, I know, obviously, you've you said about uh, trying to get your hand sorted, at, uh, but um, if everything's fine with your hand, when would you like to get back in there and, and do it all again? Um, brilliant to see you uh, achieve this goal and get into the UFC and win your debut on, you. on Saturday and uh, hopefully we do see you see you in there in the near future and thank you very much for your time uh, thanks for your time today as always it's um, been a pleasure and we've enjoyed watching you Rose I think the first time we uh, interviewed you you were 3-0 and as a pro and to see how much you've improved over the past couple of years has it's been incredible and we look forward to seeing you in two years time so seeing how much you've improved Thanks, yeah, uh, anytime always no problem cheers Arnold thanks Sam good day